Welcome to the Kingdom of Bahrain for the Babco Energy's eight hours of Bahrain, the eighth and final round of the FIA World Endurance Championship 2024. Please remind drivers that the track is clean, track is dry, and the need to respect track limits. Wish you all the best for the qualifying session. LMGT3 qualifying has started. The words of Eduardo Freitas get qualifying underway here for LMGT3. Two orange and black cars. The second one flashing the headlights. Currently second in the LMGT3 points. Yashi Shaheen and his teammates have won twice this year, including the 24 hours of Le Mans. Here we are then, exiting that final corner on a run up to the main straight. DRS line we've just passed. Finish line we've just passed. And the timing line is right here. And it's uh, 2 minutes 2.3. with a, a lot of experience in prototypes as well as GTs, converted really well, I thought, to the GT3. Well, he didn't use all the circuit available on the approach to 14 and then ran a little bit wide as a consequence on the exit, uh, but he's in at the moment Ooh. into Hyperpole, P6 right yep. now. Important lap for him because he's P13 at the moment. You see the Hyperpole target right at the bottom of your screen there, a 204 to beat, so he's not within that on the fastest app he's set so far, but he's on a much better one this time around. Fastest overall uh, in that first sector, that first part of the lap, personal best, and only 500s down on the fastest lap time set so far. So he should get through here into Hyperpole. And behind him, Darren Leung, just about clinging on, but Sara Bovi losing a quick lap. 54, Thomas Floor. This should be enough, should be well enough to put him into maybe the top half dozen. Watch the clock, 203, a 203, 6 yeah, three tenths away. That's a really good lap from Thomas Floor. In the Ford Mustang number 77. Yeah, and a second away at this point on the lap. That should see him through into the top ten. Four. Yeah, for the moment. Sarah Bovey lost her last lap, so the Iron Dames are down in 15th. This could be enough to put Ryan Harwick into hyperpole. 202.311203. No, not enough yet. Not enough. Darren Leung, British GT champion. And he's got traffic in the final corner. Traffic yep. in turn 14. That's really going to hinder his lap here. And that was Thomas Floor, I think, uh, heading back into the pit lane. Oh, I think that would have cost him dearly. At least half a second there was thrown away or more, I should think. He's got to be within 1.3. He was nine tenths away, 12th, not enough. Oh, surely he would have done it. Take off at least, at least, like I say, another half second of his lap time. He would have been through there to the top 10. I think Valentino Rossi knows that as well. So end of the second sector, 1.7 seconds down. And I don't think this is going to be enough, even though he's done two personal bests here. Looks tidy enough, but maybe just not carrying enough speed towards those apexes, the middle of the corner. Is it going to be enough? The clock's still well, ticking. Only one Lexus will be in the top 10, either 78 or 87, and he doesn't bump out the sister car. So it is the 78 that goes through. Under 30 seconds to start LMGT3 Hyperpole. Pit exit is open for LMGT3 Hyperpool. Oh dear, Tom Van Rompuy loses the lap before he completes it for track limits. Sarah Bovey coming across the line, but at the moment this is sort of a sighter really. At first, properly competitive lap time to top the, the chart, if you like, to come from James Cottingham. It's a 2.02, .02. so United Autosports other McLaren now tops the session. Josh Cagill, who topped the qualifying session, come into this. Top time, 2.02.23, and he's a second away, but fourth quickest. Here comes Josh Cagill. This could be the fastest lap that we've seen so far. 
as she got the sun in her eyes down towards that final couple of corners, 14 and 15. Looks good on the break in, turns the car in nicely, runs it right up to the kerb on the exit of 15. Now it's that drag race to that finish line, a 202.2 to beat. What's it going to be? She crosses the line, a 202.6, not quite enough. It's P3 for Bovey right now. Look at the gap between the Iron Dames in fourth, 0.435 back, and Malik in 0.441 back. From 10th place, this might be top six for Thomas Floor, and that would be a great qualifying run from him. Seventh place. But a nice exit there for Malikin. He What's needs it going to be? Seven thousandths to move up to fourth. That's all he needs to improve by to get ahead of the Iron Dames. Stays P5, P5 yeah. five tenths down. But that is a first pole position for United Autosports, a second pole position for McLaren this season. How competitive the class is that you've got all the top 10 within barely a second of each other and you've got seven different, six different manufacturers in there. Yeah. Hypercar qualifying session has started. So far this season, only one car has won from pole position. We're racing from midday till eight, so it's going to be a lot of darkness. So Toyota's uh, lead the way in terms of track position. That's why you see them at the top of your times at the moment. Number eight, yeah, now split with uh, car number six. This is some vigorous weaving around uh, from uh, the car 91. Really that crashed bump. into the ground as a result of that. That's, uh, that's Brendan Hartley. Oh, no, sorry, Nick DeFries was first on track. So, yeah, fastest for the moment. And second goes Brendan Hartley. And the time to beat at the bottom line there, 159.5, that's the time of the other Alpine, the 35 Alpine, which at the moment is in the top 10. Uh, the two Toyotas still pushing on, but in traffic now. So don't expect an improvement from them in a hurry. Here's 99 nil Jani, got to beat a 159.5, gets a 48.3. So happily in at the moment, but that goalpost is moving. Uh, one and a half tenths down, what's he going to be in sector two? He's got a bit of traffic heading towards turn 13, but he's still on a pretty decent lap here, five tenths away. And they look quite competitive as well. He was P3 or P4 in FP3. So, uh, yeah, Danny Fiat and that Lamborghini working well around this circuit as the Alpine does the right thing and moves over offline. Alpine made, uh, beg your pardon, uh, Lamborghini made it into Hyperpole for the first time. Last time in Fuji was ninth quickest. And this looks like it might be enough to get him into the top 10 at the moment, but two Ferraris remain outside. He is in the top 10 at the moment. Robin Frein's P17 currently. Is this going to be enough for him as he comes up to the line? Yes, it is. He goes P3, safe for now. Schumacher, this is a very important lap. What's he going to be by the end of sector two? Oh, he's somewhere close enough, but I don't think it will be enough for him. He needs an exceptional sector three. And you can see there, really on the power, as he turned the car through turn 13, the wind behind you there, sliding all the way around, a sure sign these tyres are crying enough. Will it be enough for Mick Schumacher? Through turn 14 and 15 he goes. He's too wide and he's off the track. And that's it, it's gone. P17 for the Alpine. Mick Schumacher and the team know it. Now it's all about Alex Lynn, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It's six tenths the gap to uh, P10 to get through to Hyperpole. I'm sure this isn't going to be enough for Lynn. Has he pulled out some magic in the final sector? I doubt it. It's not enough, it's P13. This is the top 10. It is Toyota Gazoo Racing topping the Tums 147.498 for the championship contending seven car. Then the 51 Ferrari, the 20 BMW, the second Toyota, fourth quickest, the 
second BMW, fifth quickest, then the only Hertz team, Jota Porsche, in their final race with those cars to make it through to Hyperpole. Porsche, Penske Motorsport got both their cars through, seventh and ninth. The second, uh, factory Ferrari, is eighth and Proton Competition make it two Privateer Porsches into Hyperpole. Yeah. Four, three, two, one. Pit exit is open. Hyperpole for Hypercar has started. Ten minutes for our ten Hypercars to set what hopefully will be the best lap possible. Fresh set of tyres used for this uh, for this session only, so you can rag the living daylights out of them with impunity, Anthony. And actually, that perhaps just gives you that little bit of extra margin to really push the car. They're not part of your tyre allocation if that's what you're thinking for race day. This is a one-off set. It has to be the softest set available to Michelin. First out there. Nick Freeze fastest in that uh, knockout round as we riding on board with him down towards turn one. It's a great shot here. Now we look back at the driver at work. Eyes to the left-hand side. Focus on those braking marker boards. The 100-meter boys slowing it down. Then you look to the apex, pinch it and hold it. Then squeeze that throttle pedal gently through turn two. Then fully on the approach to turn three as you head up the hill now towards turn four. It's all about winding it up for this next one. And in the background, you see Nick de Vries really weaving, still a long way back from that sort of temperature. And behind him, Kevin Esch and Matt Campbell coming up fast. So on board with Esch, first of the two Porsches. And he's had to back off a little. And now has he gone by de Vries? No, he hasn't. That's de Vries in front. Matty Campbell behind him. Van Tor is still on a, a bit of a warm-up lap here, but it's between Hartley and De Vries at the moment. Hartley crosses that sector two, 4.7 seconds up on the fastest time set for what it's worth, but further behind him, De Vries, 4.3 seconds up. So yeah, Hartley a bit quicker at the moment out of the two Toyotas. Boston Voss getting a little bit uh, edgy <laughs> there, isn't he? That's just settling in for the last couple of moments. The two BMWs slipping further down the frame, though. Now ninth out of the ten is Robin Freins. This is that will not count for Dries van Ter after that runoff at Turn 1. But look at this. Whoa. That was a bit too much, wasn't it, for Robin Freins really having to hang on to the rear end of that BMW. He's P9 at the moment, he goes P6, not quite good enough, nine tenths away on the lap time. We look further back and pick up Kevin Estra, seven tenths away by the second sector as he now heads down towards that final couple of corners. Well, he's only six tenths away at the moment, so this isn't even a better lap. It looks he's okay on the exit, he's doing everything he can, but I don't think it's going to be enough to topple those Toyotas. P8 for now is Estra. What's he going to be? P6. He goes P6 as he crosses the line. The two minutes to go. It is still Brendan Hartley at the top. He has pitted. Yeah, running on board now with the uh, Hertz team, Joe Takar, car number 12, Norman Nato. They have won a race this year, but not with him on board. He was Up off racing elsewhere, of course, yeah. wasn't he, when they won in Spa. So to get ahead of Gianni, he needs... Yeah. Not enough going on there, 147.9 for Norman Nato. That clarifies that uh, that thought of mine that it's a second away by the, the second sector. So yeah, P9 for Matt Campbell, pushing on. It looks like the Porsche here on this track is just a little bit tail happy. We've seen that from a couple of other cars out there as well. And it, that's not really the balance you want. And yeah, look, off the track there, just uh, in the middle of turn 14 and 15, just struggling too much to hang on to uh, to the rear of that car. Look at the top right-hand corner of his dash, flicking away between green, which is better than his previous lap, and red, which was worse, and it was within a few hundreds. Into the pit lane comes the number seven Toyota. They do not take the point for pole. The number six Porsche does not take the point for pole. 
second in Fuji. They were second in Texas to their, uh, in Sao Paulo rather. And uh, now they have their first pole of the season. Front row is all Toyota. Second row will be made up of the 51 Ferrari and the Proton Competition 99 Porsche. Then it's the second factory Ferrari uh, alongside the first of the factory so Porsches. So two title favourites. Absolutely. On row three of the grid. Row four of the grid will be Porsche Penske's number six and Hertz Team Jota. Row five will be BMW's uh, 15 and 20. And then you can see where everybody else has qualified. So that is it for qualifying. That is the first major skirmish. The war, the real battle will be fought over eight hours tomorrow.